Hello. <laughs> hey. Hold on, I don't know why my camera's not working. Yeah, I got a, a great pick of a blog, but Yay! <laughs> Hi. Hey! Oh man, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. I'm psyched we could do this. I've been uh yeah, I've been following your work on Instagram for a while and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm glad we could do this too. I'm excited to talk to you. I've also been following your work and um, I've really, really enjoyed the pictures of you in the Arctic. Oh yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. That was a, uh, that was really fun. Yeah. I got to like chill there for a month and I, I've really only ever made sculpture before, which is like, I think a reason I'm really into your work is I can tell how intricate it is to make it or like what materials you're using and so this trip was a crazy like push out of my comfort zone for me because I've never not made sculpture and I was like filming myself rubbing my body on icebergs and stuff like <laughs> yeah that's it's that's super cool that um your practice is expanding like that did you was it a residency or you just went for yeah no I went through um Sorry, I'm just setting a timer so I can keep track of how long this is. Okay. Um, I went through the Arctic Circle Residency, which is this amazing program that they – it was like a group of 30 artists that they sent up there on a boat for a month. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly women. It was like 26 women and four dudes, so that was also really awesome. <laughs> yeah. And like huge diversity of age and practice. There were some writers. There was like a 77-year-old photographer from New Mexico. Her name's Caroline Hinckley. She's awesome. Uh, and then, like, a 24-year-old filmmaker from Austin, like, the whole gambit. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to write that down. I definitely recommend it. It is life-changing. Ooh, and you should bring your sculptures there and put them on icebergs. That would be fucking <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that would be super cool. Arctic yeah. Circle Residency. Cool. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going to go into, like, official interview mode. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Somewhat, I guess. I mean, that's still this. But um, so there are, yeah, the, the goal of these interviews is we're really excited to just, like, learn about your practice and how you make work and where you make work um, mm -hmm. in, like, a casual way that maybe you wouldn't normally get to show with the world. Hence okay. the, like, Skype session. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so if you want to introduce yourselves to everyone and, yeah, start with that. Okay. Um, is it cool that I'm on my phone? It might get a little wobbly. I'm doing it because I... I wanted to walk you through the studio. Is yeah. that good? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. totally perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, I'm Dan Lamb. Um, I make sculptures. Um, I'm most known for my drippy shelf sculptures that are very organic and colorful and textural. Uh, um, yeah, I'm happy to have you in the studio. <laughs> cool. We're happy to be here. So uh, where is your studio? Where are you making work right now? Um, so I have two spaces that I currently work out of. Um, my home studio, um, it's just like the back half of my house. And I also have a studio at the Fairmont Hotel in downtown Dallas. So I'm um, currently their artist in residence. So I'm working on some bigger stuff there, just more experimental, um, like kind of no pressure, just, you know, kind of getting crazy with it. And then um, where I do a lot of like production and for shows and stuff happens at my home studio just because it's a little easier to just like wake up and like start working or go to bed late and stop working right then you know yeah, yeah. that's amazing having a home studio seems like the dream um it's you, so ideal <laughs> yeah is it in like a separate portion of your house or like do you work in your bedroom also um so the the house had like this <clears throat> um I guess the back half of it was added on. It's like an older home. I think built in like the 1950s. <clears throat> and um, it had like two extra rooms added onto it. And so that's what I use as, as like my studio. So I, I can kind of like block off the front half of the house and keep them a little bit separate. Um, and I can like open the windows back here and let air circulate when I'm using like resins and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Do you find that it's like um, 
difficult to separate when you're like chilling at home and in the work zone or do you like flow pretty seamlessly between those two? I, yeah, I just kind of float between the two. It's, um, it, I think it's to my benefit because a lot of times like I'll be doing something and I'll just, an idea will, will like come and I'll, I'll I can just go and do it and sort of access it right away. Um, versus, you know, like when I think about how I have to go to the Fairmont to work on this bigger sculpture and I have an idea like right like at that moment, I'm like, Oh, I have to remember to do that. So it's just a little more seamless and like, it's easier for me. I know some people like to separate the two worlds, mm -hmm. you know, and like have like a, a space that is not their making space. Um, but I think that's a little harder for me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so what are you working on in this space right now? Do you have anything you can show us? Okay. Yeah. I can show you guys some stuff. Um, let me, let's see, let me turn the camera around. Um, so I'll just take you through a little studio tour and kind of, oops. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Hold on. I have some food on my desk. I'm just gonna... <laughs> the, the raw, real look. <laughs> so this, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a judgment free zone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's really rainy today, so it's not, I don't have a lot of natural sunlight right now, um, so i got to turn on all these lights, but, um, so this is, like, the, the kind of office studio area where I do all, like, my detail work, um, so there's not much going on there right now. There's actually, I do have this one. This is a large, soft sculpture mm. that I've been working on, kind of, um, playing with this new flexible polyurethane foam that I've been really interested in. It's soft. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out like the best ways to apply texture. Um, so then this is the second half of the house. Here's like all my material shelves, classic Ikea stuff. <laughs> um, and you can see all the, like the smooth on Reynolds materials, oh, yeah. blue and white. <laughs> um, and there's the, like a kind of display wall. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. Um, <laughs> And so you can kind of see I have some medium-sized sculptures happening right now, right here. And these are made with hard foam. Um, so I'm just kind of getting bigger and changing up forms. Um, you can also see some, you know, like experiments and like I'm using the airbrush a lot more, which is kind of a newer, newer part of my process that I've been doing. Here's a finished piece that oh. has that airbrush. Oh my God, I love that one. What, what are you airbrushing with? Is that enamel? Um, I am airbrushing with, it's not enamel, it's, um, it's just like fluid, like fluid stuff. <laughs> I probably should know the answer to that, but I use like, here's, here's my supplies. Oh, word, word. Um, I use golden a lot. Ugh. They're high flow acrylics. And then my favorite, favorite is this stuff. Ooh. Um, by Holden. It's Aeroflash. Oh, the colors are so rich. The pigments are very, very dense. Um, and I get really nice neons out of those, which, you know, as you know, um, neon sometimes will be a little too transparent mm -hmm. depending on the brand and, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Ooh, I have some really cool ones that I want to show you. So these are done with, um, chameleon paints Ooh. so they change and shift colors oh my god <laughs> and um i you know I, ha I have rhinestone pieces that i do that shift and change colors and so i've finally been able to kind of utilize these chameleon paints in a way that works i've tried quite a few times in the past but um i've noticed that when i have texture like let's see if I have a lot of texture on the surface, the chameleon paint doesn't have the same effect because there's it's not smooth enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Are you applying that with an airbrush also, or what's that process? No. So, yes, that's actually – so that was part of what I've just figured out is I was applying them with an airbrush, um, and it wasn't working out very well, and this was actually rubbed on. So I created mm. a tacky surface, and then I just kind of rubbed on this this – uh, pigment these powder pigments mm -hmm. and they almost have like a chrome effect now which I'm really excited about yeah. and then is um, that like sealed in with resin or is that just yes okay yes so there's a coat of resin on there yeah the pigments are a little delicate if um if you don't right, right. have like a protective coat yeah and this is my a big holographic <laughs> <laughs> my new buddy I'm hey, really excited friend. about that one 
Um, let's see, what else am I doing? I'm customizing some lighters <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> awesome. The benefits of having a studio, you can cr get crafty sometimes. Yeah. This is supposed to change colors, but it's kind of cold in here, so it's not doing it. <laughs> um, here's a squishy that I'm working on. It's a thinner one. Mm. Got some sprinkles on it. Um, I have another one here that I'm planning on doing. Let's see if I have a new sample. Oh, yeah. This. So I'm playing with sort of um, these interacting forms mm -hmm. where, like, one is soft and one is hard. And they're kind of playing with, like, gravity and um, just, like, the pour and the softness and yeah. all that stuff. So I'm going to do that to this one. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. I wanted to show you the, oh yeah, the not successful one. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, the effects of, of the holo, like the holographic is gorgeous on this because of that smooth surface. Mm -hmm. And this is the exact same application, um, rubbed on, but it's just not, it just doesn't work that way. Hmm. Probably Which, because of the surface area, right? That the light needs like more surf smooth surface yes. area to diffuse over. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So it's unfortunate. <laughs> no, but I it really... still looks really awesome. It's just happening at like a much smaller scale, you know? Yeah. These like little micro moments. I think that looks fucking mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Cool. <laughs> Get, you know, sometimes like, I don't know, you're in the studio by yourself for too long and you're like, this sucks, but then someone else sees it and they're like, oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, so. that's why it's like so important to have your community around you to like run ideas by like, since you have the studio in your house, do you get people in there a lot or are you usually just like in your zone or? Um, I do do studio visits, um, fairly frequently. Um, but I think there's just, yeah, I think there's just a lot to look at in my studio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so sometimes things go by and like they're missed or, you know, whatever. But yeah, I do. I do like to do studio visits, and I I like to have that conversation um, continue. Um, because yes, that's <laughs> I get like two in my head, and then I like don't. I don't like. I. It's nice to have some some fresh eyes or, you know, objective, um, whatever. Yeah. Do you feel like Instagram ever does that for you? Like you're someone with a pretty active Instagram practice and I'm always surprised by like how much I gain from that when people like uh -huh. comment on random videos of my studio that I post, like. Um, I, yes, Instagram does kind of, it's like a supplement. It isn't the full conversation that you could have with mm -hmm. a person like one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, like a critique or whatever, but it does help it does help me like as far as like a wider audience response because mm -hmm. yeah like definitely you know I do a little video on stories or something and then people like you know message me and they're like oh my gosh like that's great or you know whatever and rarely do I have someone tell me they don't like it so I think that's what helps <laughs> when yeah. you have like you know someone one-on-one -on -one. they're they're a little more um honest or right, right. just open yeah yeah uh, this is so great your studio is beautiful mm. and really well organized <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> because of how much stuff I have and uh, how much, like, I, I usually try to keep things, um, you know, organized and neat because of so the ma amount of materials that I kind of collect. But I try not to hoard either. So I have to, I have to, like, it's like a balancing act of, <laughs> like, going to Reynolds and buying, like, a ton of materials or ordering online and then making sure that I use everything. Yeah. <clears throat> so I like to keep everything kind of visible. Otherwise, I don't use it. Right. Well, so sort yeah. of on that note, like, do you find yourself throwing things out often, or do you tend to make use of everything you make? Um, I try to make the most of everything, and then maybe, like, once a month, I'll do a clean out. So, like, if things have accumulated a little too much at a certain point, then I'll, like, I'll, I'll toss things. Um but I do try to save as much as I can and try and reuse. So like, um, let me show you, let's see. So when I work with resins, I have a lot of excess resin. So what I do is I just squeeze them out into molds. <laughs> and so I, I make a lot of these little, like, just like little jewels or whatever out of them. Um, and then I'll reuse them. And that's what's, hold on. That is what is, nope, not that one. <laughs> Ugh. I have one of those jewels right here. Oh, hey there, buddy. Yeah, so, you know, I like, it's a little, it's covered up, but mm -hmm. I try to reuse as much as I can, um, just knowing that 
a lot of these materials can't be recycled. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely – pouring them into small molds is, like, the pro way to not have that waste happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I've been playing with that, too. Like, I have a bunch of these molds, and I'm going to probably make a few of my own. But this this one's really fun because um, I make, like, little donuts. <laughs> um, there's another one. Oh, yeah, these. I make what looks like giant macarons, which are Ooh. pretty cool. Oh, yeah, here's a donut. Here's some donuts. Ooh. Little foam donuts. Heck yeah. Yeah. I that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So we're almost out of time. Um, oh. So I want to ask you the the final question we've been asking all the girls, which is, mm -hmm. what's your favorite thing to touch? Oh. Like out of my work or just in life? In life. It can be your work. It can be <laughs> greater than that. <laughs> um, let's see. Favorite thing to touch? Probably my cat. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think she's probably the best. What's her name? Frida. Let me see if I can find her. She's oh, probably yes. in here. This, so this is the rest of my house. Chill. Got a nice little trading art collection. Oh, yeah, there's Barbara's piece. Off. Yeah, Barbara's right there. She showed us your piece in her interview. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's they go so well together. Yeah. Oh, there she is. There's my kitty. There's Frida. Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's so sweet. Oh, hey. Nothing like, nothing like a warm kitty. Oh, yeah. I think that's been the most popular answer to this question so far. Oh, yeah? Cat? <laughs> yeah, apparently cats are really important to a lot of our studio practices. <laughs> they are. They're so, like, they're just so zen and chill and, like, they, they're so, I don't know, you just watch a cat and you're just like, what are you thinking about, you know? Like, <laughs> where do you go when you just zone out? I don't know. They're very peaceful. Yeah, they're good. They're good energy for the studio for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have a lot of like goopy stuff in there. Do you ever worry about you know your cat getting stuck in some resin or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's why actually, I, in an ideal situation, I would probably work on the floor. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why everything's elevated onto oh. top, like tops. Yeah. Um, Frida has grown up with me, like um, since she was a little kitten. So early on, she got we got some paint accidents. We haven't ever had resin accidents, luckily, but um, she's learned what wet paint and materials smell like. And she doesn't jump up on any, any of the tabletops. Wow. Um, so she's really good. And I an ideal studio are, cat. Yeah. And I've we've been thinking about getting a second, a second, you know, little kitten. And that's my main concern is that we'd have to go through that whole process of them learning not to jump on things or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever again. So. Well, maybe Tita yeah. can teach the kitten. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> She's, I, I, I think she'd make a good cat mama. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your studio with us. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, so I'm psyched I finally get to see your space. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I'm glad I could share. Let me turn back to <laughs> this. Um, yeah, thank you. I um, can't wait to see all the other interviews you've done. Yeah, so we're gonna um, we're gonna live stream on Facebook or like on Instagram Story rather some of the uh, live things during the event, mm -hmm. like on Friday, and then also we'll make a website with like transcriptions and all the video on it, and we're also gonna try and make a book if we can get some grant money. So, Ooh. yeah, hopefully, and and we want this to like continue developing. Um, we're actually doing a show in Austin in January. That's gonna be like an extension of this. Mm -hmm. So we might, like, expand some of the interviews or, like, pair up and, and collaborate. I don't know. There's there's more to come. So we'll keep you cool. posted. Um, I would love to go to that Austin show. Yeah, I'll send you the love details for it. It's okay. going to be January 19th at Museum of cool. Human Achievement. Oh, I know that place. Yeah, they're dope. Yeah. Cool. cool. Okay, cool. Well, then we'll see you in January. And thanks so much again for the tour. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Anytime. All right. Have a good studio day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.